Welcome back. Things are coming to a head. According to Emilio Baza, who turns out is on our side, we have only until midnight to save the baby. And that will be up to Gabriel. So they chased me for miles. Good thing I had the Harley. God is good. Yeah, vanity works too. It's time we talked about the temple. We must reach the Holy of Holies before midnight. The temple? I've been trying to tell you. Sydney helped me find it. There will be traps to keep out the uninitiated. He means those who are not initiated into the mysteries. Gabe's read a lot of mysteries, haven't you, bud? No, my friend. The hermetical mysteries. This is why Mesmi must go with you. I would go, but I... I dare not risk it while the adepts are down there. I'd like to go. I was hoping you would stay here with me, Grace. We can use Mesmi's radio to stay in contact with the others. They may need some of your computer expertise. But... Three. Three is the number that will best protect the group. Myself, Gabriel, and... Uh, I believe Mr. Mosley is a trained police officer? Hell yeah, I'll go. I got a gun in my room. But, uh, there aren't really any vampires down there. Are there? A few. If I know Montreux, he will admit only his most trusted allies tonight. For such a prize as the baby, he might be challenged. His kind are not known for their loyalty. Yikes. What about the treasure? God willing, we must remove it to safer keeping. Wait a minute. This is about the kid. I'm not putting my butt on the line so you guys can get rich. It's not what you think. I assure you, the baby is the first priority for us all. Hmm. Just don't get too far ahead of me, bucko. Now let's see that map. Where is this thing? We are very close. She said it was... Yep, she was right. Whoa. Here goes nothing. Be careful. Was that really necessary? Looks like fun. Stop whining. Look at this place. Wait. Everything here could be a trap. What? You want to lead? No. Just be wary. Mosley and I will follow. Sounds good to me. Great. Okay. Well, we entered uh, here from the southwest arm, so I guess according to the temple diagram, this is the porch. And something tells me we are going to have to get up to the Holiest of Holies, or the Holy of Holies, or whatever it was called, where the site is, which is which means we uh, need to cross the temple. And that already looks interesting. The chessboard. We came in via this giant slide. Well, I guess it went better than the last time Gabriel went into a cave. We're certainly not leaving in that direction. That thing goes straight up. And that is why you take rope when you go exploring caves. <laughs> that thing looks familiar. Isn't there something like that on the dollar bill? Almost. Not quite. Also, the one on the dollar bill doesn't actually represent that. I think someone took a lot of trouble to build this place. The question is, why? Yeah, they certainly didn't spare any expense. That's awesome, but I think it's just a lamp. <laughs> okay, well at least you're in awe of it, I guess. And before us, not quite unexpected, a chessboard. There's a pattern of sword tiles on the board. I think we can actually get a top view of it. There we go. Yeah, we have tiles with swords and tiles with skulls. Those don't bode well. Some of the tiles have skulls on them. I don't think that's a good thing. Does that floor have trap written all over it, or am I being paranoid? I think you're being paranoid. 
Two of the tiles in the front row have a cross shape on them. That's the Templar's cross, isn't it? Um, of course the camera is still free, even though we went there. And there's some shapes on the other side. Those might have something to do with the shapes on Grace's map. There's some geometric shapes on the doors. I'm guessing I have to pick one. Let's see what we have shape-wise. From left to right, we have a square, a pentagram, that represents the devil, didn't it? So I'm guessing it's not that one. Triangle. I haven't seen any triangles around. The sun, maybe? Circle. Well, a lot of the stuff uh, we've been doing has been around circles. And the circle is supposed to represent life, isn't it? So if we have to pick one, my vote is on that one. This is a rectangle. A stop traffic sign. Okay, maybe not, but anyway. And a uh, hexagram. The hexagram is also an option. But this, my bet is on the circle. Now the question is... Can we just cross this uh, floor? I mean... Surely it's... Uh, it's not a trap. Has to be safe, right? Let's just walk on it. Oh! The hell? All of the swords lit up when I did that, and the one I'm standing on dimmed again. Hmm. Well, this one has a skull on it, but whatever. Ah! Yeah. If you weren't expecting that, then, uh... I don't know what, uh, if you were paying attention or not. Let's retry that. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm guessing we have to do something with the swords, but... Let's try it again. Maybe we need to only step on the sword tiles. Well, that wasn't it. Uh, maybe we need to start on the... Templar cross um, tiles. Wait a second, isn't that the position for the knight? That's appropriate for Gabriel. And well, let's try just going forward. Okay, this isn't working. I think we're going to need some professional help with this. Fortunately, we have a radio with direct contact to Grace, and we can, in fact, talk to her about this. You can do that in two ways. You can talk to her about things that she has things to say about. If this icon shows up here, you can also actually right-click, and the hint button has been replaced with the radio button. So that's another way to do that. End result is the same. We're in this big room. The floor reminds me of the floor in the church. Black and white tiles mean anything to you? Yes! Yeah, we kind of already knew that. Any more interesting bits to offer? Any more tidbits on the chessboard thing? Um, how big is it? I'm about the size of a playing piece in relation to it. Then maybe you should act like one. Act like one? Hmm. And since these two tiles are marked, maybe we should act like a knight. It's worth trying, but apparently we can talk to Grace some more. You've got to have more hermetical wisdom than that. Okay, I've been searching. The Templars brought the game back from the Crusades and changed the pieces to match Western culture. Maybe you should think like a knight. A knight Templar. Okay. Well, I got there before Grace pointed it out. I have to get across that floor and over to one of those doors somehow. Okay, but it is not actually as simple um, as that either. Well, I guess we have to um, 
Well, I, we could try at least getting to that door without um, stepping or, or without um, stepping on any of the skull tiles and behaving like a knight. So I guess we should try and start here then. Um, let's see. Let's see if this works, first of all. Yes! It does. Um, well, it's pretty easy to get to uh, the circle. I don't have time for that now. I don't have time for that now. Uh, nothing happened. Uh, okay, well, that's actually not it. Okay, so that wasn't uh, the way to do it, but... Um, basically, what we need to do is get to the circle. And that part of the puzzle is actually the most annoying part, because if you don't know which symbol to go to, it can be quite um, a lot of effort to try all of them. Because we ju don't only need to go there, because nothing happened, we just saw. You need to step on all of the sword tiles on the way, while behaving like a knight, never stepping on the same tile twice, because as you saw, every time you jump on one, it will disappear afterwards. That also goes for the sword tiles, even though they disappear, for they don't disappear, they just dim. They will break if you jump on them again. And not jumping on any of the skull tiles. It's not actually that difficult. There are like a billion and one uh, different solutions to this puzzle. Okay, that's maybe a bit too high. But there are literally thousands. The easiest way to do it, if you want to figure out your own solution, I find is once you figured out that it is here you need to go, it's draw the chessboard on a piece of paper, start here, and then try and just find a route somehow that does this, and visits all the necessary tiles and doesn't step on anything twice, and ends on the first row, because it is not actually necessary to start on the knight positions. You might be tempted to think that it is, but it isn't. You can start anywhere on the first row. Although it is not particularly difficult to find a solution that does start at any of the... Of, uh, at either of those two uh, places either. Like I said, there are literally thousands of solutions. Just simply drawing it out on a, on a map, uh, on a piece of paper, you will be able to find one. I did this myself. Um, I did not have my original notes anymore, unfortunately, but when I was practicing the game, I did this myself and found the solution to get there in 29 moves. However, I was kind of interested to think how fast you could do this, how, uh, what the shortest number of moves is. So I looked for a number of walkthroughs online, and the shortest solution I found, if I remember correctly, was 27 moves. So that's uh, shorter than mine. And I think that solution uh, actually did start at one of the two uh, spots marked with a cross, but I still didn't know if that was actually the optimal solution. Well, I'm a computer scientist, so what do you think I did? I wrote a program that um, tried to find the shortest solution. Now, allow me to get um, technical for a quick uh, for a minute here. What we're doing here is, um, I guess, somewhat um, similar to a knight's walk, but uh, a knight's walk is just any walk across a chessboard using the move of, the n of a knight that visits all possible, f that visit all squ uh, squares. So it's not quite what we're doing. What we are doing, however, is trying to find the shortest path that visits all of these uh, specific points, namely the the swords. And that is known as the traveling salesman problem in graph theory, a problem that is known to be NP-complete, which means that it can only be solved by enumerating all possible paths. There is no 
more efficient algorithm. It has been mathematically proved that you cannot write a more efficient algorithm that guarantees the shortest possible path. You can apply all kinds of clever heuristics to approximate the uh, shortest possible path in far less time than it would take to enumerate all possible paths, which is what most route planners do. Um, if you give them a problem like the traveling salesman, just finding a path between two points is actually quite simple. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off topic. But um, since our state space isn't actually all that big, because we're limited by the fact that we can't go back on our steps and can't st stand on the skull um, spaces, I simply decided to write a program that enumerated all possible uh, solutions and print out the uh, shortest one. Now that did turn out to be a bit slow, uh, I didn't spend an awful lot of time optimizing the program. Uh, instead I just threw some hardware at it, uh, fr uh, through my work I actually have access to a very large cluster. I ran it on uh, 10 nodes of that cluster, 80 CPUs in total, uh, where it took 6 minutes to execute. And found a solution that was 24 moves. So, unless there are any bugs in my program, I can guarantee you that this is the shortest possible solution to this puzzle. Yes, I do like to go this extra mile for my Let's Plays, don't I? Okay, so what is the solution? We are actually starting here, not on the crosses. So that's our first move. Then we go to this sword for move number two. To the corner, which is number three. Then here for move number four. And to this sword on the side, for the fifth move. And here in between the swords, for the sixth move. And then to the sword at the back, next to our final destination, and that's move number seven. See, this is what makes this puzzle annoying. Even if you think you've got the right solution, it takes quite a long time to check it, because you have to execute all those moves. Okay, that's eight. Over there, let's hope I don't make any mistakes. Because then I have to start over. For nine, we jump in between these two skulls. And for ten, we jump in between these skulls. And eleven gets us the, cro uh, the sword on the side. And for twelve, we go back up here. Then with 13 and 14, we take the other sword on the side, allowing us to jump to this sword with the 15th move. To the corner of the bottom row. And then to this sword. That's 16 and 17. And then 18 takes us to the sword next to where we started. With 19 and then 20, we can take the remaining sword on the left side. And from now it should be um, pretty straightforward. Because we can simply take this one with move 21, go to the corner and then back to that sort for 22 and 23, and then our final 24th move takes us where we want to go. Hey, I got one open. Excellent, Mr. Knight. Keep moving. We'll be right behind you. Be careful, bud. And there you have it. The guaranteed shortest much solution. For safety in numbers. And a pendulum. Gee, wonderful. The guaranteed shortest solution to um, this particular problem. And um, 
I'm not guaranteeing that there aren't any other solutions of 24 moves. This may not be the only one, but um, I am pretty confident that I didn't make any mistakes in the program, meaning that there are definitely no solutions that are shorter than 24 moves. Okay, well this room looks interesting and deadly, but we'll have to see how to solve this one in the next video.